And I'd like to ask next Mauricio Ortiz uh, to continue our program. So my name is Mauricio Ortiz from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. I want to thank NASA and NEA for inviting me today. This is the cold, uh, maybe boring part of the presentation, I guess, but I will try to liven it up and keep it interesting. So in 2013, the Bureau of Economic Analysis began a partnership with the National Endowment for the Arts to measure, arts, to measure the arts and cultural sector in the U.S. economy. To be clear, artistic and cultural activity was already included in BEA's economic statistics, including gross domestic product. The purpose of our work was to identify or tease out artistic and cultural activity in BEA statistics and publish an arts and cultural production satellite account as a supplement to BEA's economic accounts. How did we define arts and culture? BEA and NEA based the definition on the idea of a creative chain associated with arts and cultural production. The chain captures the economic value of the creation of a cultural product to its production, to then the distribution, and finally the consumption. It is a definition consistent with definitions of arts and culture used by the United Nations and the European Union. With this definition in mind, the statistics are presented under two broad headings, core arts and cultural production and supporting arts and cultural production. The core category includes commodities in which output is identified as primarily contributing to arts and culture. It includes performing arts, museums, design services, and arts education. The supporting category consists of commodities that support the core category through publication, dissemination of the creative process, or other supportive functions. For example, it includes event promotion, printing, and broadcasting. On this slide is a simple example to help illustrate how the definition works. If you have a ballerina that attends a dance academy and then does a performance of Swan Lake, the dance academy and the performance itself are captured in the core arts uh, category. If that performance is then recorded and broadcast for people to view, the recording and the broadcasting, as well as the theater and the construction of that theater where the performance takes place, is in the supporting category. According to the estimates most recently released on March 7th of this year, Arts and cultural economic activity accounted for 4.2% of U.S. GDP, or $763 billion in 2015. To put that in perspective, compare that to the utilities industry that contributed 1.6% to U.S. GDP, or the mining industry, which contributed 1.8% to U.S. GDP, or the transportation and warehousing industry that contributed 3% or the construction industry that contributed 4.1%, or finally the retail trade industry which contributed 5.8%. Across states, arts and cult cultural economic activity ranged from 7.9% of state GDP in Washington to 1.3% of state GDP in Delaware. Here we see a U.S. map by state that shows the percent of state GDP accounted for by arts and culture. The states shaded in deep blue are states where arts and culture contributed a larger percentage uh, to that state's GDP. I don't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to give you my support. I'm Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, and I have a hearing that I'm conducting right now, but I wanted my friends in Texas to know that we stand with you, and we thank you so very much the great work. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Additionally, the total number of arts and cultural jobs in the U.S. was 4.9 million jobs in 2015, accounting for 3.3 percent of all jobs, with an average compensation of $75,757.
Across states, the number of jobs ranged from 705,000 jobs in California to 9,000 jobs in Delaware. State level compensation for arts and cultural jobs is also available at BEA's uh, website in, as part of the satellite account. Here's the final map I'll show you. It's a U.S. map by state that shows the percentage of all jobs in each state that are um, accounted for by arts and cultural, uh, the arts and cultural sector. Okay. This is a snapshot of BEA's homepage. All BEA statistics for the arts and cultural production satellite account are publicly available on BEA's website in an area completely dedicated to the satellite account, easily accessible from BEA's homepage. So if you just go to the section under supplemental accounts, you see the link that takes you to everything arts and culture at BEA, right on the main page. This is where it takes you. Uh, this is our landing page, to everything arts and culture. Besides the statistics themselves, you can find here news releases, state summary sheets, blog posts, survey of current business articles, and other relevant information that BEA has with regard to this project. And I'll finish up by this is my contact information. I'm always happy to hear and entertain any questions or comments that you may have with regarding this work. And uh, feel free to reach out. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ryan. Thanks so much, Mauricio. Great to see these data. And these new data on the economic contribution of the arts and culture across the country are extremely important. But it's nearly as important to make this information accessible to the public and to policymakers. The NEA and BEA have produced a great series of reports and tools to help understand the ACPSA data in every state. NASA's contribution to this effort, in collaboration with the NEA, is an interactive visualization called the Creative Economy State Profiles. We'll take a few minutes now to demonstrate this tool and show you the types of information that it can provide. So hopefully this is some of the flowers that go on the data. <laughs> so first, there's a simple way to view top line data for every state. By scrolling over each state, you'll see figures showing the economic contribution of arts and cultural production in dollars, in percentage of gross state product, and in total jobs. So now let's highlight a few states. In Colorado, arts and cultural production accounts for $13.7 billion and 4.3% of the Colorado economy, contributing over 100,000 jobs. In Georgia, arts and cultural production accounts for $19.5 billion, 3.9% of the Georgia economy, and over 133,000 jobs. And if we go over to Missouri, Arts and cultural production accounts for 3.8% of the Missouri economy, contributing over 133,000 jobs. Or, I'm sorry, 93,000 jobs. We can then compare the size of the arts and cultural production to a number of other industries with which you may be more familiar. For example, in Missouri, total arts and cultural production in dollars is smaller than total retail production, but larger than construction, transportation, utilities, agriculture, education services, and mining. If we head west to Washington state, we see that the arts and culture is larger than total, re total retail production, which is pretty phenomenal if you think about it. Also, for you wonks out there, this tool offers multiple data points. We can toggle between the number of creative jobs and total compensation associated with those jobs. By comparing employment and compensation data in Washington state, we see that arts and culture produces fewer total jobs than retail industries, but these creative jobs produce higher levels of compensation. Now the prominence of creative production will certainly vary between states. If we go over to Montana, we'll see arts and cultural production at a slightly smaller scale in terms of dollars. But if we look at these dollars relative to the population through locations quotients, we see which state industries rise to the surface. Now location quotients measure an industry's relative concentration in a state when compared to the nation. So we know that musical instrument manufacturing in Montana is 4.7 times above the national average. When you take a closer look, 
I think you'll find that there's an interesting story about the creative economy in every single state. And sometimes those interesting stories emerge over time. So in Alabama, for example, we see pottery and stained glass manufacturing on a steady rise and theatrical ticket agencies jumping up in the past couple of years. Our tool also shows overall state economic growth compared to the arts over the same time period. Arts and cultural production in Alabama increased by over 9% in the most recent year, while the state economy as a whole increased by 3%. We see a similar trend in New Mexico, where the arts and culture increased by 10% and the state economy decreased by 2%. <clears throat> now, one last thing to show is that we compare your state to other states. So depending on your perspective, these comparisons can help with bragging rights or with goal setting. <laughs> If we go to the Midwest, we see that Minnesota has the largest relative creative economy in the region. But if we switch the lens to just looking at employment, South Dakota takes the top spot. Switching over to the West and looking at Wyoming, we see that Wyoming actually has the largest concentration of creative jobs out of all Western states, which is pretty impressive. So there's a lot to dig into here, and if you're interested in a personal walkthrough of your state's data using our tool, my colleague Patricia Mulaney Loss and I will be standing at the back of the room. <laughs> She's hiding there behind the screen. <laughs> uh, and we'll have tablets for when the event, uh, after the event concludes. Uh, additionally, there are handouts that you have with information on how to find the tool. And for those of you viewing at home, uh, you can easily find the Creative Economy State profiles on the homepage of our website, which is located at nasa-arts.org.